Maya 2020.1 update is now available and today we're going to walk through the features enhancements and the new things that has now been made available in this new version. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. So today we're taking a look at Maya 2020.1 update and we're going to take a look at some of the cool things that is now available here. So this is the update to the 2020 version that was released a few months back and the 2020 actually came with a couple of very cool stuff and we did talk about some of them on the channel and at the same time we went ahead to share a bit of things that you might probably want to know if you want to start working with Maya 2020. So I think that the update here is more of extensions compared to you know all of the things that has to do with brand new features. So without further ado let's get right into it. So the very first one which I would like to talk about is Substance. So right now there is a brand new substance plugin that is available for Maya so this is quite prebuilt so once you install Maya 2020.1 you will be able to get this all you have to do to get it running is to go over to your windows go over to settings plug in and scroll all the way down to where you're going to find to where you can find substance and from here you should be able to load up the substance substance for Maya substance workflow Python file and you load these things directly here and you can be able to find them within the menu so if you go over to the menu and click out right here you should be able to also you know play with the settings and the settings actually has to do with how you would be able to render the file the default resolution you want your substance files to work with and if you want these things to run based on certain engines so right here i've gone ahead to select gpu which is what i want to use for and you can simply proceed by setting this to cpu if you want so with this here how do you work with this tool so how you can work with this one is you can choose to batch import your substance files so if you have a truckload of substance files you want to work with you can choose to batch load them directly here so i have a couple of them so i'm just going to simply select one two three and i can load these things up and and once you do load them up you can choose to bake this to disk if you want to bake them when you have a mesh and you can also simply apply workflow to maps so we're going to take a simple look at this by simply coming over here creating a brand new sphere actually i think it's cool to create a torus so let's go ahead and create a simple torus i'm also going to create a very simple plane which i would use as my default grid and let's scale this all the way up select this right now and raise this up so with this here the next thing which you would probably want to do is to fire up your hyper shade which by now once you have already loaded your substance files which you can get from substance source or you can choose to create them yourself if you go over to where you have textures we now have those substance files here so the substance files are either .sbs or .sbar you can load them right here you can also select one of them go all the way down and simply tell Maya that you like to create a shader network so depending on the rendering engine which you're using you can choose to do this because we're making use of Arnold which is directly shipped with Maya I'm going to select Arnold and click over here that has create shader network so once I do that this would create a shader network which will be able to access once we go over to the material section and with this selected you would now notice that we have the shader network automatically created so this is going to save you so much time especially if you're trying to get your you know your substance designs your substance works from substance painter or maybe a substance material if you want to get them from wherever you made them or wherever you downloaded them from into Maya so this is going to really really help you and you can see right here it has proceeded to link this all up and with all the appropriate maps you now have this here and if you want to proceed to playing with this you can simply select either of them and if you want to bake them to disk you can simply do all of this by clicking right here so if we proceed to assigning this over to a model we can switch on texture within our viewport and you'll be able to see this and if you want to render this you can also proceed by adding up a dome light and clicking on the Arnold playback button so once you do that you would now notice that you have your rendering happening directly here so why we're having this is because we have a displacement node that has been plugged onto this so if I simply, you know, raise this to the section, proceed to bring in this right here, you notice that we do have a displacement map here. And in case you haven't seen how you can proceed with creating displacement map, there is a link which I'm going to keep in the description for you to get going with that. 
So once you have your displacement, you will be able to get these things going. So if you're trying to load up your Substance Source materials or things that you've done in Substance Designer inside here and you want to use them as a means of texturing or you know adding a couple of things directly onto your viewports or onto your models that you have directly here in Maya, it is now extremely easy, way more than ever, to get these things going. And with that said, I think it's also cool that we proceed to talking about something else that has to do with Substance that has also made its way to Maya 2020.1. So we've talked about the badge and how you can proceed with this, but what if you're working in Substance? So like right now, we do have a model that we were working with in substance previously and if you also want to see how we proceeded with making this there's also a video in the channel that talks about that so we did this model and now i've gone ahead to export the textures and also the model out so what if you want to load your model directly in substance so previously how you get to do these things is to bring in your textures one after the other hook them up and then you can proceed with doing a couple of things right but now how you can get these things going is i'll simply go ahead and import the dress which is directly here and go to this section called apply workflow to maps and once you click that you can also specify the rendering engine which you want select here which has to do with getting the multiple maps and by simply selecting all of the textures that you want hit on select and they would find a way to link all of themselves up with the proper attributes and channels that is related to the shader that you're working with so since we're working with Arnold I'm just going to simply proceed by hitting apply and once we do that you would also notice if I drag the hyper shade right here you would now notice that we have a brand new shader that has been created with all of these maps linked up so it's just extremely easy for you to just click drag and drop and once you turn on textured you would now have exactly the same thing which we had from substance directly here so it's just saving you so much time and i think this is going to be extremely worth it for as many people that are working with substance that just simply wants to get their stuff going so for us to get going i would simply open up a brand new scene right now and i've already talked about this in the channel earlier and i'm also going to put a link in the description about the rococo brand new you know motion library that now exists with maya so maya and the guys from rococo have actually teamed up to create a very cool you know set of workflow that you can work with so if you go over to windows go all the way down to where you have animation go to your motion library right now you'll be able to have access to the rococo marketplace which is now known as the motion library and with this you can have access to a whole to a truckload of motion files that you would want to work with if you're into motion capture retargeting or you're into you know um, pre-visualization or you just want to work with some motion capture files and you want to use them now the cool thing here is there is a ton of publishers that you'll be able to get a couple of motions from so you can choose to sort out the motions based off the publishers you can also choose to sort out your motions based off the categories if so if you want motions that has to do with dancing actions war you know and so on you may have to go over to the section that has to do with pricing click on the button and you would have access to finding as much motions that are for free that you can simply load directly into Maya and to purchase these you all you have to do is click over here add them to cart and you know download them or once you have them you can simply click directly from here and you'll be able to download these particular motions into your scene and once this is done once you click onto this button you will be able to have this here and every other thing that has to do with retargeting is extremely cool all of your character has been you know linked up with the character rig so once i select this and go over to our windows go over to where we have animation and open up the human ik you would now notice that once i go to the definition section that all of the joints have been defined and is ready for characterization and it's also ready for retargeting so a video that has to do with all of these things is going to be in the description so in case motion retargeting is a thing for you or in case working with mocap is a thing for you then of course this is something that you should really really consider taking a look at all right so with this in mind it's also worth noting that there is now an update to the timeline bookmark so the timeline bookmark was one of the features that actually came with maya 2020 and if you're trying to you know get your animation going and you want to find a way 
of bookmarking stuff so you can know exactly where what motion is when you're doing your animation this is going to be extremely helpful so for example let's believe we have a pose right here and if i hold down shift click and drag i can actually select this pose and i can also proceed to naming these as you know pose one for example so i'm just going to call this pose zero one and give it a given color and go ahead and create this so the updates right now is quite small but of course it's going to be extremely easy for a lot of people because now why by by simply holding down control i can move this around and by simply holding down control and moving over to the edge of this particular you know bookmark i can now proceed to stretching this so i can now stretch this as much as i want and you know encompass a lot more frames directly inside here so the next cool thing which we're going to talk about has to do with ptex now in maya this looks like something that is no longer visible or no longer useful in maya but right now there is now an update to this and the update actually has to do with the size which you can now texture of course i do know that a lot of animation studios make use of the ptex to do a lot of stuff pretty cool to see that right now if you want to texture using ptex you can now proceed to make about 16k texture contrary to the 4k texture that you can work with so for anyone that's asking how you can do this is extremely simple so just go through and create a simple sphere so i'm just believing this is the you know the assets which you want to texture and it's very reassuring to see that you can texture way more than just your you know your default color map so by simply having this you can right click go all the way to where you have paint and switch to 3d paint that is one way to do it or you can switch over to your rendering and go to the texturing and switch over to 3d paint tool and once you do this you would notice we have this huge x which simply means that nothing has been assigned to this particular object and at the same time it means that you cannot texture on this so to get this going what you might want to do is go over to the section right here which has to do with the tool settings or you can go ahead and double click the tool settings from there double click the tool and get the tool settings and with this here i can say i want to texture the color and assign a texture material to this i will be giving a very simple window which i can enter the size of the texture which i want to paint so it's cool to see that you can now paint about 16k texture directly now so with this i can proceed to set the file format which i want and assign new texture and once you do something like this if you hold down b on your keyboard you can reduce this and continue and proceed with texturing so another way we can work with this is quite simple so i'm just going to proceed with selecting all white and now fill this entire object with white and maybe select something else like red because it's very visible to the eye and i can start texturing and this is not the only thing which you can texture you can also texture certain attributes right here and so a couple of the attributes which you might be able to texture right here includes things like the bump map so if i have the bump map right now i can apply this assign a brand new texture and i can start texturing the bump i can paint in as much bumps as i want so this way you can apply bumps if you want if you want to create things that has to do with displacement incandescence you can also do this directly here and it's very cool to see that once you're making something like this you might want to see what it looks like in real time by throwing in a very simple dome light and then for our example i'm just going to apply this simple plane because i like having my planes right here and by throwing a simple plane like this i can also switch to the annual viewport render which is now available for use in maya and with these things you can now see that of course the updates right here are very tiny and like i said earlier there are more of you know feature updates that has to do with uh things that might probably be considered as plugs of course they do make a lot of difference in your workflow and in case you're also thinking about you know updates for bifrost there is also a very cool update that has been made for bifrost that has to do with faster compilation and faster aero simulation that you can get and for the graph section they have also been able to make the graph section way more readable you can now zoom properly once you're making use of the graph editor so these are very cool and nifty updates that has been made over to this tool and of course i would like to know what you guys think about this in the comment section and which of these updates are you mostly impressed about tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.